Perfection. State or quality of being free from fault or defect. Perfection takes perseverance. A lot of hard work. Relentless commitment. And you have to be comfortable being pushed past your limits, pushed outside your comfort zone. I know because I've spent my whole life there, outside my comfort zone, pushing myself striving for perfection. As a kid, if I made a mistake on my paper, I would obsessively work my eraser, no matter how long it took, to ensure every speck of it was totally, neatly erased before I could move on. I'm a textbook perfectionist. And really, I see my perfectionism as an asset. It's a drive inside of me that's been critical to my success. I've built my career on it. But it's also something that can poison you, something that can keep you from seeing the beauty, the good, the achievement, and all of those near-perfect moments in your life, in your work. Because ultimately, what we know, what even I know, is that true perfection is impossible. So how do we teach ourselves to be happy with the pursuit? How can I, as a perfectionist, give myself permission to be happy with great, or good, or A for effort? I strived for straight A's in school, which meant I worked hard, studied a lot. But even that wasn't enough. I had to be well-rounded. Basketball, theater, yearbook. Once I signed up for something, I saw it through to completion, even after taking multiple basketballs to the face, breaking my glasses on more than one occasion. But still, I did not quit. I also failed tests, got C's in a class or two. I even considered changing my major from chemical engineering when things got hard. I can't imagine where I would be now if I had switched to biology or business. And I definitely did not succeed in becoming a basketball all-star. And with each of those, I felt like a failure. Why should I put forth all of this effort if I was only ever going to fall short? When I was 21, I got my first job in a distillery. On my feet for 14 hours a day, I was the youngest employee and the only female on the production team. Squeegeeing the floors, moving hoses, polishing the copper and brass on the stills. It was less than glamorous. Seven years later, thanks in part to that pesky perfectionism, I found myself moving to Memphis to become the first female head distiller in the state of Tennessee. It was the opportunity of a lifetime something I had worked so hard to achieve. To be able to design and create my own products, to put my spin on something, to even have a say in how that bottle would look, it was the ultimate dream. But it was also an opportunity that would test me, and one that would teach me an important lesson about my own pursuit of perfection. I come from the bourbon world. Before this job, I had only ever made bourbon and rye whiskey. And soon enough, I found myself trying to make gin. I don't know how much you know about whiskey or gin, but they're not exactly close relatives. I wouldn't even call them distant cousins. But here I was, trying to make gin. And because of my nature, it had to be as perfect a gin as I could make. So I spent weeks studying the processes, and then a year, hundreds of hours, developing one product. I went through batch after batch, tweaking the recipe, sometimes to good effect, sometimes not so much. And when I thought I finally had it right, I shot up in bed one night after a nightmare that my gin was so awful that people were literally spitting it out 
of perfectly good gin and tonics. Thankfully, that did not happen. Thanks to my quest for perfection and some patience, I eventually landed on a recipe I was really happy with, and the gin was able to hit shelves. Ultimately, though, I spend most of my days thinking about and making whiskey. Every day, I make sure every part of the process, every element leading up to sealing a full barrel, is as perfect as I can achieve. The grain ratios, the fermentation, the distillation, everything is exactly as I want it. But then, we have to wait. Me and my perfectionism have to put our faith in a wooden barrel. Whiskey cannot be rushed. It doesn't let you know if it's any good until months, years after you've done the work. I have to wait while a barrel does its own uncontrollable thing for several years. Now I, I can take samples from the barrels every couple of months, which helps to ease the anxiety. But I still worry every day that it might not turn out as I hope. It might not be perfect. Imagine for a moment. That you're an author, and you're writing a novel. You have your outline. You've even written a few chapters. Now imagine you're not allowed to write the remaining chapters. You have to take your book and lock it up in a room for four years. The literary elves will do the rest for you. You can open the door every couple months and read a line or two, but no more. Then you have to close and lock that door again, and this goes on for four long years. And in the end, you can only make minor editing changes to what those literary elves did for you. Did your anxiety just go up? <laughs> Welcome to the whiskey world. Ten years in an industry shows you a lot. It teaches you a lot. I am not the first person who has put liquid in a barrel and had to wait, had to let it do its own thing. So I look to those who came before me to remind myself that it's okay to not have control over that one part of the process. That in the end, that barrel will do exactly what it's supposed to. Turns out, whiskey has made it easier to be a perfectionist. In an imperfect world, it has helped me find the balance in striving for perfection in the things I can control, and being comfortable with the less than perfect, uncontrollable aspects of life. So, as a perfectionist, how do you know when you've achieved your goal? When can you say you've succeeded? It's going to be different for everyone. For me. It's when my husband, my parents, my brother, my in-laws try something I created for the first time, and they light up, and then they mix up a cocktail, and another, <laughs> and another. <laughs> I can't make everyone happy, or make everyone like what I create, but I can make myself happy, and I can make my family happy. That is my idea of success. Of perfection. Cheers.